in a world crying out for a top 10 show. John Roca and Matt Nost are here. So grab your assigned seat, sit back, and enjoy this week's top 10. Brought to you by the Schmoes No Network. Take it away, boys. Welcome, everybody, to this week's Thunderdome. Thunderdome. This one's a really interesting one. We, we went a little highbrow with this one. Kubrick, little little uh, Clockwork Orange, little 2001 Space Odyssey. These are, these are high-end films. Did you have a choice? The Cinefo- Of course. 2001. 2001. It's always my choice. I, I think I take Clockwork. Really? Yeah. Oh, great. At least we split. Uh, it's one of the... Uh, yeah, um, Most of the times we go with the same one. More often than not, yes. yeah. But I think on this one, I do take clock. Just for its, I could rewatch that more often than I think I can 2001. Really? Yeah. Oh, it's so the reverse for me. Wow. It's so the reverse for me. Um, I'm John Roca. I am Matt Nost. This is the Top 10 Podcast, Thunderdome. And spoiler alert. Yes. We're going to talk about a 40 some odd year old film. Yes. So if you haven't seen it, uh, thanks for the download. Thanks for the, the li- like or the watch on YouTube. Yes. Oh, pardon me, on Stitcher, on everything else. <laughs> Uh, but now we're going to talk about yes. Kubrick's masterpiece, Clockwork Orange, which won by the slimmest of margins yet. It really did. I think it was like 3% of the vote. That speaks to the love people have for both these films. Man. A lot I'm of votes, too. Yeah. yeah. It, was, it was a close one. My little droods. This was, I re- actually rewatched it this morning, which is why I was a little bit late coming here, because I wanted to. I haven't seen it in years. It's an uncomfortable film for me to watch. Very, very uncomfortable. Because of the graphic depiction of very real violence, very real rape sexual assault like it was so for 1971 it's pretty amazing how graphic it was i mean we weren't that far as a country out of like the Hayes code in the 50s and the 60s where you yeah. didn't show anything or it was a big deal to show a woman's leg or ankle or sh- or you know shoulder it was a thing and so to have it be so graphic and already in just the beginning I mean, it's x-rated yeah 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 true when it came out, I don't know what it stands at now. I'm sure it's just an I'm R. I'm sure it's just an R now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But at the time, it was an X. I mean, it's only, I think, one of two films ever nominated for Best Picture as an right. X rated. With Midnight Cowboy being yeah. the other one. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, but at the same time, like, yeah, coming out when it did, there's just a lot of nudity. Yeah. And some of it is, uh, uh, like that sped up scene where yes, he's having the sex with the two girls. Two girls yeah. It really nullifies any of the sexual tension that would have existed had you watched this. Yeah. This doing this Benny Hill like you know bam, 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 just yeah. as they're nonstop going at this yeah. for however long that lasts on screen, like probably a solid like ninety seconds or something. Yeah. And you could tell, I mean, that's a lot of shooting. <laughs> that is a, a lot, lot of, of footage. Yeah. Just sped up to that degree. Yeah, it didn't seem like it. It seemed like it was all one take too. So yeah. it was weird. And he had and he had them multiple times in the yep. two was so interesting. One gets stressed and goes about doing whatever she's doing and then the he one... switches out. Yeah, he's just this insatiable yeah. 17-year-old kid or whatever he is. Yeah, which is not right because he was 28 when he made this film. And you can tell now looking back he looks 28. He does not look like he's in high school, which is so interesting. Um, but the film does explore these. And this was so funny to watch it again, Matt, because uh, I had, like I said, I hadn't seen it in years. So it was a very uncomfortable film for me to watch. But... It really is interesting how it explores uh, the idea of behavioral uh, psychology, the idea of trying to train a populace to not be evil, to deny their basic human instincts at times. Sure. Of the more of the more evil people, because he is flat out evil. This guy, flat out evil. There is nothing redeeming about him. Before. Oh, I mean, he's a pure narcissist. Yes. Does not care about anybody else. Actually, can't even calculate as to why you would care about you. Yeah. So you're like you don't represent anything to him. He's just yeah. concerned with his his self or himself rather. Um, right. Yeah. I mean, it's because I I watched it last night. Oh, okay. Uh, and it is all like God, the charm of Malcolm McDowell. Yes. Towards the end made me go, why haven't I watched? Because I haven't watched it in like 10 or 15 years. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, and when I first discovered it, 
because it was like they, you know, Kubrick dive of, sure. oh, shit, you like this? He did so much other. Check yeah. this out. Check this out. You got, you know, I watched it a bunch at that time. But just to see the progression of that character, to see his acting within a ton of different scenes mm -hmm. where he is showing so much complexity behind his eyes, yeah. like his mind is just churning. Or, my, I mean, my favorite scene is the closing where he's getting fed. Yeah. <laughs> and the, the politician minister. comes in and he's correctly calculated his position yeah. in the world right now where all sides need him. And he's at this weird, like, I'm the king right now. Yeah. And he's acting as this just petulant child. Yep. He's learned nothing. I love the closing of, you know, of course I'm reformed. And he's having the thought in the midst of the minister yeah. being there and the reporters rushing in and all that stuff. And it just goes right back to sex. Yeah. And ultimately, if he stayed with that thought long enough, probably violence. I thought he died. That's what I think. Because his eyes roll back into his head. And this is the image he's seeing because he's because he either he's dead or he's gone brain dead. And this is the he's lost in this okay. world. I thought because his eyes roll back in his head and he just kind of stops and he just kind of got like goes just goes limp in in his face. So it's certainly possible, like the, all the stuff they did to him, all the psychological. He finally snapped, like he just snapped and yeah, that's that's no what connect. I took it for. It's like it's. Yeah. It's the residual, like, PTSD almost. Yes. And he just lapses into some sort of psychological state whenever there's too much stimulus. Oh. Like, with all the cameras going off and the music brought in, yeah, and the minister maybe. right there, and it's just like this overload, and he, he goes to a happy place now. Oh, that's a great point. That could be that, too, yeah. That's, that's what I took okay. away from it. But, I mean, that's watching it last night. I didn't have right. that, I don't think, thought 15 years ago Yeah. when I saw it. Yeah, I don't remember thinking that he died at the end either. Although it would be kind of an interesting move by Kubrick. To do to give him a bit of his comeuppance in that he, right in that moment when he has the world in his hands, he dies because of all that they did to him uh, emotionally. The thing but that's is, almost too good for the character. Yeah, you're right. Probably right. Uh, he's such a terrible person. I found myself personally, Matt, at watching this film, going, "I want this guy to be killed." Like I, he's such a terrible person, and and I know what Kubrick was trying to say in the '70s, which is what was happening when psychology was starting to become a popular thing, and people were really being abused by this kind of behavioral uh, psychology. That was, I think, it was a book that came out, which was what Burgess, the original writer of this uh, of this uh, Clockwork Orange novel wrote the novel in protest too was this oh, okay. behavioral psychology this idea that you can train people to not be good and that's why he has the priest in there going or to not be to be good and the priest in there saying yeah. you have to choose to be good it's a human yeah, aspect. you're robbing the person of free will exactly thereby basically dehuman or dehumanizing him yeah you're taking away what makes him him, which is the element of choice. Yes, exactly. And without that, then, okay, now you're just programming a person. It's not a person anymore. Right. It's your little robot to do whatever the hell you want to. And he does it. like it, he, Kubrick does ask a lot of you as the viewer, presenting this incredibly terrible person and then using him as the battlefield for this. Because it's uncomfortable. Because if you're going to be idealistic about something, you've got to be idealistic all the way to the end. And the thing is this. if you, Because both sides, both liberal and conservative, use him for their points of views uh, about society. You know, this idea of getting abused. And the other people, they were trying to train him because, look, you're happy if we can train these cr criminals to hate violence. Yeah. You know, you won't be attacked. You, your wife won't be raped while you're typing on your typewriter. You know, those kinds of things. Like, they're trying to present that idea, and then you have the other side going, well, no, you're erasing the humanity, and this is gone. This is the you know, police state you're trying to create, and blah, blah, blah. So it's, it's the interesting uh, struggle we're having even now, in our country now, with, with you know, Bernie wanting to be this whole different type of country. And then you have Trump appealing to this type of country, you know, and yeah, Hillary's somewhere in between, but... That's just a fascinating thing that it still matters. It still resonates, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's. I think, I think that tale will go on as long as there's organized, civilized society. Yeah. Just people railing against the power that they've helped put into place, yeah. and that power trying to basically figure out what 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 it can and cannot do. Right. You know, everybody abuses power once they have it. Yeah. Unfortunately, I don't care how altruistic you are. If you're in that position long enough, you will abuse that power at some point. Yeah. Just like, oh, yeah, the, the rules don't apply to me on this one. You know what I mean? I'm Come doing, on, guys. I'm doing something good overall. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and even if it's frivolous shit, like, oh, I used the company credit card today for lunch. Yeah. But it starts there. And just like you get to the stories of, ah, shit, this, you know, I think I heard a story the other day where a school superintendent here locally, I don't know where. Yeah. Ran up hundred thousand dollars on school, you know, credit cards. What? Just had access to it over the course of two years. Holy just crap. 
Went to some conference, but got himself a five-star hotel. Ugh. Went to this, and, you know, like, I'm sure it built up to one day you bought lunch. Yeah. Or one day you got gas because you didn't have your wallet with you, and that's all you had. Right. You're like, I'll pay him back. And then nobody asked for the gas money back. And it just builds right there. But it's just like any amount of power yeah. left them long enough, even if it's insignificant, people will abuse it. Mm. But, you know, I love that when the leftists show up yeah. to basically do a story on him, to, to tell the public how damaged he is. The more interesting thing is the fact that simple music, they don't have to beat him up or do anything like that to drive him mad anymore. Mm-hmm. It's the simplicity of Beethoven's Ninth yeah. that will drive him to insanity. Yeah. So they're just as bad. Absolutely. Yeah. They gave him, he gave them the tools to destroy him, yeah. and they used it willingly. And the writer did for their definitely means. in vengeance for his wife. True. You know? But the other two people but, were on board. Yeah, exactly. To justify getting the political outcome that they want ultimately. And this right. guy's just collateral damage in the middle. Right. And it's the thing that happened. And I think that's what was happening back in the 70s. These people that had been flower power all of a sudden became some of the, they broke off into this more militant peace uh, movement that was like bombing stuff that was trying to get the you know trying to kill government leaders trying to kill you know, all this kind of stuff and then you have Manson come out of that and that's all of these things that came out of what was supposed to be a peace and love and free love and all this kind of movement there was the more fervent people and you see that sometimes too some of the some of the Bernie supporters uh, and I'm a per, I'm a person on one side like I, <clears throat> I don't have any choice I don't you know I'm not anyway but like. Uh, some of them can be real fervent. Same thing with Hillary supporters. Oh. I think Trump supporters. You can say, oh, Trump supporters are this crazy, but then there's just as many on the other sides who are kind of nuts as well a- in their own any- way. Anybody that's devoutly loyal to any subject, I don't yeah. care what it is, yeah. I more than likely, I just assume on the outset, I don't get along with you. Even yeah. if we agree, because I don't agree in the way that you want me to agree, right. which makes me wrong. Right. So anybody that's, I don't give a shit <laughs> what it is. Yeah. Um, you know, someone brought up a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about the backlash of, of, uh, DC and, and Marvel oh, and all that yeah. and people getting attacked and at the end you know towards the end of the episode we were we both said it's a movie yeah like relax and somebody on YouTube I can't remember what but it's a regular listener was like hey listen that's that's while that's true if people didn't love movies then why would we tune in to listen to you and we're like good point absolutely good point but I, our point is that's totally fine I love movies too yeah. and I listen to other people talk about movies right. but I don't attack somebody because they have a different opinion about a fucking movie yeah. that I did nothing other than show up and watch yeah. it's not like I made the damn thing yeah. I have no reason to attack you absolutely for that yeah so but I, I don't give a shit what you are whatever fervent belief you have whether it's political or it's fucking it's about peanuts yeah and, and I can, people can't have peanuts on flights and blah blah blah, blah or whatever I, I don't care Goddamn right. Yeah, I don't fuck. Fuck it's off. Gotta be walnuts. So whatever it is, <laughs> whatever it is, I don't. It's just like anybody. It's a hundred percent about one thing. Yeah, that I don't like you at all. Yeah, because you. I think you're right. I think you do run into that. And then they make deals where they violate the idealism of their points of views mm-hmm. because they believe in the overall exactly. achievement of it. And that's where you see the pride. And that's what I think you see here in the film. Both sides. Uh, do some really dirty dealings because in that one moment you see it when he's getting like the eye drops and he's going back for a second or third session and he's screaming at them that the music is what's messing him that they're taking the joy of ode to joy out of his life and turning it into something horrible and yeah. he says to them stop please the music you can't, don't do this to the music it is the one pure thing that he has in his life that symbolizes something that makes him actually happy all this raping and and, uh, what do you call it uh, pure violence or whatever ultra violence ultra violence is all just an extension of his anger of whatever reason right but like the moment when he's the moments when he's really happy is when he listens to the music which is why he hits his friend with a stick when she starts singing uh uh beethoven yeah, yeah, yeah. in front of her and it's why when he's at the record store he's actually turned on by these women for the two reasons cuz the the music is on and cuz they're sucking on those lollipops and he gets turned on by the whole combination so for him the music was this one pure thing and the scientist in that moment with the other female doctor you know that you can tell the female doctor is like we should stop and the guy's like well you chose to do this you signed up and blah blah, blah. Well, he also but says, he has a hesitation so he knows too it's wrong but he also says in that you know well maybe the punishment of that is part of the rehabilitation process yes because well, they're winging it right they are that's what i'm saying yeah, yeah there there's i mean they're presenting this as like strong science right. which is like this is your first guinea pig right 
you're test driving this right now. Well, it's just like anything, any government program, anything. There's going to be collateral damage. There's mm-hmm. going to be people who don't, who come, uh, who ha, who spark questions to your ideas, to your theology that you hadn't thought of before, and then you have to kind of make a deal with yourself to ignore those things or to move past those things because you think the general overall good that it can do is more important than the occasional people that get hurt. And that's what the film kind of highlights because, yeah, he's a terrible person, but how far is he allowed, should he be punished to the point where you're erasing his humanity? Oh, yeah. You know? What's the point? He's a living, he's almost living dead. He's almost living dead, you would say. I love the twist when the cops are his former oh friends. Oh, God. The first time I saw that, I was like, oh. Yeah, right? And you oh, react like he reacts. Yeah. You react like he You, well, you start to sign with him and be like, he's changed. And you see these yeah. two and you're like, oh, no. His parents kicked him out of his house. That whole thing That's is so weird, right? It's, it makes no sense. The guy's been gone for like two and a half years. He was in prison for a couple years right. and then opted into this program. Yes. And this dude, George, he showed up and so supplanted him. He really did. That they're like, listen, he's paid up for next month. Yeah. He's got to stay. You know, he's here on a job. He's a you contractor. Really, you can't really kick him out. Really? You can't refund him next month's rent? You guys already spent that? You're in such dire financial straits? And then I love at the end, his parents come back around. Yeah. And now that the the societal blame has shifted from them to the government, yeah, they're more than happy to have him back in their lives. Right. And and take a little bit of the blame. A little bit. Yeah. Just a skosh. <laughs> but I love that they showed up and he's like, yeah. well, we read in the paper. It's the government's fault that you're this yeah. way. And you're like, oh, so now your culpability has been, you know, yeah. lessened a little. It's the, it's the expo- exposition of who is really to blame in a situation, if there is blame at all, and who is purely in the right place to blame. Yeah. Because there's so much uh, uh, fallacy in the thought processes and so of some of these people involved in his quote unquote rehabilitation or his quote unquote incarceration. You know, you see these co- you can tell those those cops are trying to have sex with him, you know, when they're in the uh, in prison. The the prison guards are looking at him and giving him these looks and you're just like, oh shit. And then that lawyer that shows up when he's in his underwear and grabs his penis, tries to lie on him on the bed. It's these weird things. So you have all these I mean that's what Kubrick is doing. He's exposing the underbelly of all these supposed venerable institution yeah. which of course is what was going on in the 70s in our in our country or around the world people were wanting to expose supposedly good governments or good ideas or good uh programs or good departments that were trying to do these kinds of things to people you know because this idea of i mean the eyes and all that shit that they, they explored all that you know the the a lot of the behavioral therapy you know you see that in manchurian candidate there was a lot of that stuff going on in the military so it was like oh shit what the fuck yeah you know? If you, yeah, well, I mean, there's so many government run uh, yeah. things like that, experiments or whatnot that yeah. we'll probably never be privy to that right. the Freedom of Information Act doesn't cover whatever dark file that that's been locked away in. Yeah. Just because we've found out about some, but who knows? Yeah. Because dark ops have been around, you know, since the Cold War. Exactly. So how many of those various programs will never make the light of day just because we can't? Yeah. Just... We can't. Yeah. It just exists in such a shadowy place that nobody reaches their hand in that that little fucking cookie jar anymore because it'll get lopped off. Yeah. Uh, I know, just all the horrible things. So I, I wouldn't put it past the government to eventually try something like that if they were left unchecked. Oh, and like yeah. behavioral science was shown to, hey, it shows improvement in this type of individual and whatnot. We, we and tried just, it on rats. It yeah. must have worked on rats. It's got to work on people. You though. never know. Let's step it up. Let's try it on dogs next. <laughs> And let's and then try it on pigs, and then try it on this. Yeah, like me. Well, the, the police stuff you bring up is really interesting because that that moment is horrifying. Yeah, what, what they do to him is so. Uh, I can't believe so McDowell terrible. managed to hold his breath for that long. Yeah, like thrashing about, whatnot. His yeah. hands were cuffed. Yeah, uh, and the guys hitting him with you know rubber baton in the side. Right, right. But still, just the whole thing. Those guys from the beginning all took part in this shit with him. And so for them to be some kind of enacting some kind of vengeance on him, they'd already got him turned into the cops. They'd already got yeah. him put in prison for two years. What more do they want? And that just shows they're just as evil as he is in a different way. He wanted to run the gang because he wanted to do what he wanted to do. Yeah. It was just going to be the same violence over and over again just at the places that he wanted to go because he wanted to feel uh, 
like he was in charge of the gang. That slow motion walk across the by the water when he's like building up his mind mm-hmm. to hit them makes the that, decision to just go ape yeah. on him. <laughs> Such a great thing, man. I, the Kubrick uh, to re- rewatching it again, I was surprised at how much I enjoyed it, Matt. Because I, I remember it being a very it's still a very uncomfortable film. It is, but it, but you enjoy the direction so much. It's like when I sat down to watch it, the first third, I was like, uh, okay, because it's so slow and plotting, but yeah. it's all the depressing violence. Yeah, and it's just like, uh, yeah, you know what? There's a reason that I haven't watched this in 15 mm-hmm. years. But as his as he falls deeper and deeper, it sucks me in more yep. and more. Yep. Like when he shows up to prison, as soon as he gets to prison, I start to like the character a whole lot more. Yeah. And then from there on, as it builds and progresses, because that's like you know thirty five minutes into the movie, yeah. you still have another hour and a half. As it builds and progresses from there, like I'm just one hundred percent sold on Malcolm McDowell the whole right. time. Right. So you could spin him into whatever you wanted because. I just buy him as the character because you can see his mind working and, yeah. and he's, he just exists in this world so well. Yeah. And a lot of it is just utter lunacy. Mm-hmm. All the characters that come in and out, they're so overacted yeah. and it's fantastic. Yeah. Which that's the baffling part. Like the writer that ends up being crippled. Yeah. At, at the end has a very like, you know, Shakespearean stage actor kind of delivery yes. to the whole line. But he's not the only one. The lawyer you brought up earlier yeah. has weird quirks. His dad has weird quirks. Yes. It's just like the the head prison guard has weird quirks. Yeah. They're all these weird people. Yeah. And I, I somehow buy into all of it. Yeah. And I'm just impressed that it still holds up. Yeah, After all these years. It's such a fantastical world in its portrayal of the of the real world that you you go along with it because you see shades of how that behavior or that pattern can exist in someone to the nth degree. Yeah, and you're like, if everyone's going to operate in the nth degree, he's doing it on purpose to highlight what else is going on underneath. And I think that's he does a great job of that. You're right, the little quirks and all the things that different people have. I mean, even this, that scene you just though you brought up earlier, the son, the guy going in as the lodger, like everything he's yelling at Malcolm McDowell that he's doing, or not yell, but like you know, trying to be, lecturing him, lecturing him. He knows because he's doing the exact same thing. He's doing something dirty too by ingratiating himself with this couple and yeah. and displacing their biological son and saying, "Oh no, he's doing this is game. His well, crying, it's all this game." Yeah, you didn't deserve parents yes, like this oh, and all that stuff. No. Like you need to leave, right? Because he's going to run his own game on those parents and, and and abuse them eventually of their trust and their confidence. But they're and their looking love too. for. A way out too. Mm-hmm. They want to disassociate, exactly. and they just found out the day before that he was going to be released, and suddenly he's back at their house. This right. guy that killed a woman. Yeah, and yeah, I, you know, I guess at that point they couldn't. Uh, that's weird, because once once he gets out, right, and he shows back up at the writer's house, yeah. and the writer's like, "You're the guy that I've been seeing in the paper and all that, yeah. and what's been rehabilitated." Wouldn't the cops have associated then him with that previous robbery? So the guy would know the writer. You know what I mean? Because he shows up to kill when he accidentally kills the woman yeah. in the same outfit yeah. with the mask on. Yes. So once he gets caught by the cops, yeah. then all they have to do is go on a simple description and go, oh, well, you guys also did this crime too. Right. So wouldn't the writer then know while that is going down, they yeah. alert him, hey, we found the guy that raped your wife and yeah, killed yeah. you. Yeah. So why would he be, why wouldn't he know his face once he gets released two years later? Oh, no, I think he does. Oh, does think, he? It's not until he hears him singing. Oh, that he... That's when he puts it together. Okay. He's in his office. He gets off the phone and hears singing in the rain. Oh, that's that's one of my... Pros- possibly you. like my favorite uh, directorial or cinema, uh, cinemographic or right. whatever the fuck scene. Yeah. Because he's singing it in the bathroom and it has that echo. Yeah. It feels like it's a dream. And he starts to hear it, and he gets lapsed into this. It triggers a memory in the back of his head. He's like, the last time I heard that song. Yeah. And it's sung in that, oh, my, it's that fucking, that's what drives him to madness and lunacy. See, I think he knows from the beginning, as soon as he sees him, when when the muscle guy carries him in, he goes, you've you've been involved in an accident. And he starts doing this. Yes, 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 actually, yes, stay here. But that's after he realized you're the kid from that, and I can use this for my political ends. Gotcha, gotcha. So that's, that's that's all there. 
Yeah. He's already recognized that it's him by that point? I believe so. Okay, that's true. Yeah, okay, that's fair. You know the guy carrying him? You know who that is? Uh. It's David Prowse, who's the voice ah. the body of Darth Vader, the yeah. actor in the Darth Vader outfit. That's him. He was a body. He was pr- apparently trying to be a, a Mr. Universe or a Mr. Olympia in England during this whole time, and that's how Kubrick saw him on some event and asked him to be in the film. <laughs> that's how he got on the film. It's so random, dude. Uh, and I love that his dad is the guy, the Overlook from The Shining. It's the guy that the, the in Nicholson's vision when he sees oh, okay. that's him from The Shining, the old guy who's there. He's like who killed his daughters, yeah, yeah, yeah. That kind of jazz. And so it's it's interesting. He uses the same kind of people throughout the um, stuff. And the guy who tries to take over is the cop. That's Warren Clark, who I loved in Delil and Pasco, which is this like old. Uh, Serial, like a cop f- show on in British times. Okay, they're detectives solving crimes, and I used to watch it on A and E when it was on. But the police thing, I want to touch base on that real quick because I keep coming back to it, but I'm losing my thought. Is the uh, it's it's Kubrick also being a little subversive about the police that they would employ these criminals to be cops? You oh, know yeah. what I'm saying? And he's kind of like undercutting the police a little bit as well, which probably was happening back then, and it's happening now. This idea that these sometimes these cops can be criminals themselves in what they do and using their power sure. for evil. It's an abuse know? of power. Yeah, exactly. Exactly what you were saying. The abuse, no matter where you are, yeah, you have abuse of power. Yeah. I got a buddy that. Be- became a state cop yeah and um i was talking to him one day and he's like do you how many how many guys on the force are that are the guys that were like picked on or whatever else and now are doing the picking on he's like there's not a lot but there's a couple yeah there's there's a couple and he's like even if they leave somebody inevitably comes along and replaces them yeah yeah and you're like so we always have a couple around yeah you just try and keep them in check he's like you know 99 percent of the guys you're gonna run into are good people yeah and i did that's you know that's for that type of job yeah. that's great it's a tough job it is it's an impossible job yeah you're dealing with the worst of society mm-hmm. every day mm-hmm. how that doesn't just jade you to humanity i yeah. have no idea yeah yeah and the the line he says with what two two uh two jobs for two of age uh yeah. job seekers you know it's a job for two it's just the simplicity of it all you know well, yeah, but at the same time, the, the government was trying to crack down on violence, so they were basically hiring just thug cops yeah, to, to keep down. the other yeah. thugs in line. Yeah, that's really it's like, all right, fine. You know, if you're willing to basically whoop anybody's ass yeah. that you see getting out of line, great, yeah. you're hired. Uh, and it's it's such a bright film. Uh, we got to wrap it up right here, but the cinematography is fantastic in the film, which you were trying to mention earlier. The the uh, the bright colors, the, the the design of the whole film. I mean, where they go to like drink their milk. That whole club is fantastic. The record shop's amazing. There's so many bright it's a nightclub apparently. Is, in real is life, it? I in think so. Life? Yeah, oh, damn. it's amazing. The the bright colors of the scenes, and then the tight spaces that he creates with all the uh, design in the room, like all of that stuff was just fantastic and really conveys for the viewer what's happening for the person who is talking, like Malcolm McDowell's character as he's talking. So that's fantastic. I would definitely recommend it. Yeah, if you haven't seen it, please. Yeah. Uh, and you've made it through this entire discussion. What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it was good. Now, now it makes me want to go back and watch 2001 and be like, okay, does my choice then still make sense? I... I I think we actually did a nice job choosing this one because, or that the fans chose for us because it was nice to revisit it. I would have never probably revisited it any of the, anyways. Okay. So it was nice to revisit it. 2001, I own. I watched that and it's not even a problem, but like this is this was fun to watch again as an older person because it's been 10 years, like you were saying, 10, 15 for you. It's been 10 years since I did this, at least, at least because it's so uncomfortable. But what it's talking about is so topical now and you can kind of deal with the first part of the film because the second part of the film is really what... You need to be yeah. That's asking what, yourself for you know lack of a better way to the redemption of the character, even though there is no redemption. Yeah. But it's the kind of the redemption of the opening thirty minutes. Yeah, it's like it takes you to this really dark and kind of uncomfortable place. But it has there's a reason for that. Yeah, and everything that may or may not make sense early on, there's a payoff for that later on. Exactly, exactly. All right, thanks everybody for listening. Uh, this was Thunderdome Clockwork Orange on the Top Ten Show. Please follow us at Top Ten Show on Twitter, at Top Ten Podcast on Instagram. Follow Matt at Matt Nost. Follow me at The Roca Says. And uh, uh, if you want to email us, it's Top Ten Podcast at Gmail, and that's all spelled out. Top Ten Podcast. Uh, we have an announcement coming up on the horizon. Yes. If you know, we'll announce it eventually on the podcast, but uh, it'll come quicker on our Facebook or on our Twitter. So. Um, like us on there or follow us on Twitter and it'll be coming in the next few weeks. Yeah. 
That's the best I can tell you right now, or best we can tell you right now. Yeah. Uh, beyond that, uh, we're going to be cryptic. So <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's what enjoy. you're going to get. That's what you're going to get. All right. Thanks for listening, everybody.